Susanna is not with us. She is self-isolating for the next 14 days. Uh, not because she's sick. She's not sick. Uh, but someone in her household is. And we can join her... Uh, let's just get this out of the way and talk to Susanna. You're live, I think, on Skype. You there? Yeah. Good on morning. On FaceTime, Piers. Morning. Morning, Morning. Susanna. I've got to say, I, I've heard of some ways of avoiding working with me, but <laughs> this is ridiculous. Finally, after all these years, I've put myself in self-isolation from you, Piers Morgan. Well, look, it's an interesting situation because literally within hours of the Prime Minister, yes. Boris Johnson, announcing these, as he put it, draconian, drastic new measures, which involved compulsory isolation for anyone in the household. If somebody in that house showed any symptoms, then the whole house had to effectively lock down. That happened to you last night. Yeah, so tell, tell the viewers what happened. So exactly that. I mean, one of the boys, one of my children, has uh, a cough, persistent cough, and that came on yesterday. Now, before the briefing yesterday afternoon, the advice had been, as we'd been discussing on the programme yesterday morning, that the person themselves would be confined to the house for seven days, but pretty much everyone else, as long as they kept their distance, could go about their normal business. Well, suddenly, with these new drastic action measures, that changed yesterday afternoon, and it meant that if even one member of your household had either the persistent cough or a fever, um, then you would all have to go into self-isolation for 14 days. So that means that immediately I thought, well, I can't go into work and work with you guys for 14 days. Um, all the children are off. And, of course, we are effectively two households because, like many families, we're separated family. So we have two households uh, who have gone into self-isolation. Um, so it's a very unusual situation. I'd like to point out, though, that I am very, very lucky. Uh, I am paid even when I'm sick. Mm. And a lot of people got in touch with me yesterday on Twitter to say, well, you're all right, because mm. you'll get sick pay. Mm. There are people who are self-employed who will face this decision if one of their household is ill. There are people who will not be paid sick pay because they're on zero hours contracts. And there will be people who will be paid statutory sick pay but it won't be enough for them to pay their bills. So I completely appreciate I'm actually in a very privileged position compared to a lot of other people who are facing the same dilemma. But the, but the irony of all this is that you don't actually know that your son has coronavirus. He just has one of the symptoms that could suggest he has the virus, and it's, it's probably quite likely, given that London, we now know, is the epicentre of what's going on. But, of course, you might all be doing this 14-day self-isolation, which is involving a, a, quite a large number of people in your setup with the two households, yeah. Yeah. for absolutely no reason. And then, of course, you may go back into the world and somebody may then actually get it. I mean, this is the problem that... Because we've not been testing people who have symptoms... Uh, this is going to be the problem, isn't it? Nobody knows if they've actually yeah. got someone and who's remember, got it. it. Yesterday, we heard from the World Health Organization those three words, test, mm. test, test. Here, we're not getting tested unless our symptoms are so severe that we're hospitalised. So the advice for me and my family is, you know, don't even call 111 unless you're really worried. Just go online and, and take the advice yourself. Mm. So we're self-isolating. It may be there is no coronavirus. It may be a seasonal cough. Mm. There's no fever. No one else has symptoms. Now, that's one thing for me. But what if I was a healthcare worker? What if I was a doctor or a nurse yeah. and I had to go into self-isolation? Or a teacher. <laughs> and you'd want or, to know. You know, I a lot of teachers... Public service or yeah, a I'm, I'm hearing about primary... Or primary. ambulance driver. Yeah. Exactly I've, had, right. I've had tweets from uh, teachers, from prison officers, from policemen, from nurses, from doctors, particularly, obviously, the healthcare workers. But given that schools are staying open, yeah. a lot of teachers... I'm hearing about schools where, the, you know, two-thirds two uh, uh, teachers are turning up and a third are staying at home now, self-isolating already. Mm -hmm. So how long can schools sustain this we're staying open if half of their staff have to do what you're doing, for example? It's very frustrating not being able to test for it. 
because as you'd suggested in your question, this could be a rolling 14 day quarantine. Right. Because we could emerge, I mean, these symptoms might just disappear within, let's say, 24 hours. We have to stay in quarantine for 14 days. And after that period, somebody else might pick up. Well, one let's of the bring symptoms. in Hillary. So, one question, Susanna, is that a lot of people, when they inevitably will have to do what you're now doing, yeah. is what the hell are you going to do for 14 days? I mean, you can't well, work. No, I know. And I think, you know, these are some of the effects uh, that we're going to have to deal with because I love my work. I love coming into work. I love the daily battles. Um, I love the challenge. I love interviewing, um, broadcasting all of this, you know, to our viewers. It gives me so much pleasure. And I'm going to really miss that for two weeks. And I think, you know... Susanna, I'm uh, to just, to, just to jump in, Charlotte says she's very happy if you want to take, <laughs> take the rest of the year off. She says she's fitting in nicely it's here. It's not at all. We're all sending love. I'm feeling the pressure to, uh, to keep your seat warm in the meantime. I just want to let you know, loads of messages coming in for you. Paul, all best wishes to Susanna and her family. Look after yourself and others if you can, folks. We will get through this pandemic if we all do our bit to keep each other safe. Tilly, take care, Susanna. Wishing you and your family... Well, soon. And I just wondered, actually, because, you know, obviously having children and having to talk them through these things, I know from the physical side you've talked about how they are, but how yeah. are they coping and, and what are you talking to them about? Because it can be quite scary for children, can't it? Particularly when you're well, now saying to them, OK, yeah. we've got to stay here for two weeks. My boys aren't... They're, they're teenagers, you know, that nothing much scares them and, and certainly not this. Um, I think they're more concerned about not seeing their friends frankly. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it's going to be a challenge for all of us to fill the time productively. What I found yesterday was I spent the entire day scrolling through Twitter, getting updates, feeling like I was informing myself. And obviously then the briefing and all the ramifications of that and then dealing with not coming into work. But I'm going to have to spend, uh, you know, my time a lot better than just going through Twitter for two weeks. Otherwise, mm. I'm going to go out of my mind. Mm. You know, so we all think we've got a novel in us, whether I spend the next two weeks writing a book or whether um, I actually do a lot of cooking or baking or whether we set up a kind of homeschool at school. I don't know yet. This well, your sons, have told me about your, your sons have told me about your cooking skills, so my deepest sympathy to the boys at this difficult time. <laughs> And, and well, given, luckily, given the angst that... can still work and they can still put things on the doorstep. Well, so given that given how irritating you and I find each other after just two and a half hours each day, again, <laughs> boys, I'm with you here. <laughs>